So we've figured out how to take algebraic expressions and make truth tables to see what their uh, final outputs will be. We've figured out how to uh, look at a logic diagram and figure out what the equivalent uh, Boolean algebra expression will be. So in the second part here, we are going to draw, and I will do it terribly, logic diagrams from expressions. And we're going to learn how to use some rules to simplify and prove or verify expressions. So if you have been given some sort of A, Zor, B, line, line, whatever expression, you need to be able to draw the circuit or the logic diagram for that. In order to do so, you kind of got to make note of how many inputs you have, A, B, A, B, C. You've got to look through it and see how many logic gates you have in the expression and you need to know in what order those gates will occur. So let's start with a relatively simple one. I'm going to look over at my expression. I see an AND gate. I see an OR gate. And I see a negation, a NOT gate. I have three inputs. Okay, so I'm kind of going to be able to do a few things simultaneously on my diagram. So I'll draw my three inputs, A, B, and C. And these will be terrible. I apologize. And I know that the only thing I need C for requires a NOT C. So I'm going to send C right through a NOT gate. Then I'm going to look at A and B. And I decided that A and B happened before B or NOT C just because of Binaxo, our order of operations, right? AND gates before OR gates unless you're using brackets. All right, so let's draw an AND gate for A and B. So we draw that plug as best we can. And coming out of that, we have AB. So we're good. I don't need you to label the stuff coming out. I'm just doing it to uh, illustrate that. Okay, so next I want to send my output from the AB gate and the not C gate through an OR gate. So I'm going to try and draw an OR gate. So no points for artistic merit here. So my final output, A and B OR not C. So here's the ones I'm going to go through next on uh, various slides for different logic expressions that I want to make into diagrams. So starting with number one on the left here, two inputs, an AND gate, an OR gate, AND before OR. So if I were to take A, I'm going to see that it goes like all the way through. It's going to kind of, that first A just kind of goes in to my final gate on its own. Okay, but I'm also going to send it, I'm going to label it in a couple places, into, and you can either start another thing A here, or option two, oops, you can split, have a little junction, and you understand that coming off that is another plain old A. This is still A. And I'm going to have my second input B, and I want to have that A and B. There we go. So now I have two lines, one's an A line, one's an AB line, and I'm going to send those into an OR gate. So once again, trying to draw an OR gate, not my forte. There we go. Outcome A OR A and B. There we go. Looking at number two. Kind of the same setup. I've got to send an A all the way to the final OR gate. And I need to send not quite an A, a not A, to an AND gate. So just do this little not gate in line, and then I'm going to take my second input, that B. So not A and B is this gate coming out. Now I have two things I need. So 
So noticing the bar is only over the A in the AND gate, so you can't kind of make a NAND gate. This is what we're looking at. Now I'm going to send anything to the OR gate. And this is my logic diagram for A OR, not A and B. Okay, brackets into play now. So normally I'd be like, you must deal with the AND stuff first, but we've got bracketed OR gates. We've got three inputs. You can set this up however you want, as long as you're able to interpret it. I see that the A is going to do two things, so I'm actually just kind of going to throw it in the middle. Just because I've probably drawn this one a few times. All right, so I need to make an A or B gate. So I'm going to split off up here. Put in an OR gate, A or B coming out. I also need to make an A or C gate. So kind of gross, as always. A or C. My final gate, just because of those brackets that helped out the OR gates, is the AND gate, the multiplier gate. And then my output becomes A or B and A or C. Last one. We have X's, we have Y's, we have Z's, we have a ZOR gate in play, we have a NOR gate, much more complicated. So I see what type of gates do I see? I see a ZOR. This is a NOT. The dots in here to represent multiplication, it wasn't required, but it is. This is an AND. AND as well, sorry, hard to use the same words. This is a NOR. And this gate is a NOR because the bar goes all the way across. So just a quick aside. This is NOT X or not said. All right, going to set up for this one. And once again, because I use that X twice, I kind of end up putting it in the middle. You can jump over wires. You can do whatever you want uh, if you're making these diagrams. I'm, I'm not picky about style. I'll put the Z down here. So I see that X and Y are going to have to do some interaction. First Y has to be sent through a NOT gate because I want to have an input into this OR gate that is not Y. Okay, so we're going to draw a ZOR, which is just the hideous spaceship with the turbo on it. And the output of that will be X, ZOR, not Y. Okay, I also need to send the X straight up. We're not going to do any negating before we go into the OR gate, NOR gate, pardon me. So they come in as is, they go into this gate, but it's a NOR gate, so you put the dot on front. Okay. Almost done. They both need to go into what ended up being a very large AND gate. Final output. X or Y brackets to protect things. X nor is it. So now we're going to head over to Boolean algebra simplification. So there's a lot of rules and they're like math rules. You'll see them in normal algebra. They're just kind of different because Boolean algebra only has two options, zero and one. Any number at all that is not zero will be one. So if you had a value of 32, that's the same as a one, two choices only. So we'll go over the various postulates, properties, theorems. Um, you'll have a formula sheet that's on Brightspace that you can print off to use to do your tests. Uh, if you were doing a fa paper 
face-to-face -face test, I would be asking you to write down which rule you used for, you know, which step. But uh, online, I think you just get to do clicky clicks. So one might be easier than the other. Let's review. So postulates are like the obvious thing, you know, looking at number one. If A is not zero, it's going to be one and vice versa. Looking at number two, these are math rules that we already knew. Um, I'm not as concerned about the Zor rules, but uh, yeah, definitely the and or rules. So zero times zero is zero, zero plus zero is zero, and you know, Zor is zero. And these are the things we've been using to make our truth tables already. So makes sense. Everything that comes up here in two, three, and four, I feel is pretty easy. Um, these are just really the behavior of the gates. Uh, number five, a little bit strange, just talking about uh, single and double negations. If it's not one, it's zero. If it's not zero, it's one. <laughs> double negations mean it's the same as the original thing. So on and so forth. So getting into some that take a little thinking to get around and are might not be as obvious, but got them on a formula sheet. You can switch the order. A, B is the same as B, A. If you're on an AND gate and A or B is the same as B or A, and same with the ZOR gates, um, you can throw extra brackets around whatever you want. <laughs> if it makes your life easier than just looking at the straight up sentence, same diff. Um, uh, distributive, so we knew this already. If you were going to do distributing like numbers onto variables, it kind of works out the same for Boolean. This is one that's nice to know, A or B and C. And I'm saying the gate things, but I should just be saying plus and times because it, it, it's easier for us to visualize usually. It's the same as that bad, Larry. Okay. And if you don't believe any of these are possible, you can build a truth table. You know, take your inputs and see if both the output lines or columns for a plus BC, but see if it's the same when you get it all done as that. They should have identical outputs. Okay, so this is when you're mixing your operators and your numbers or combining different little things. Um, no matter what A is, if you multiply it by zero, you're going to get zero. That makes sense. No matter what A is, if you add zero, it will remain A. Looking at number 10, A times one will give you A, but A plus one, if A could be zero or it could be one. So A plus one equals one, no matter what happens, because if it's two, it's one. So there's kind of just neat little quirks that come from having only a zero and a one as your option. Looking at number 11, once again, if you're having the same input, zero times zero equals zero, zero plus zero equals zero. Like, so just always kind of think of it with the numbers to see what's going to happen. And for number 12, if you multiply one input by its negation, the answer has to be zero. If you add the input and its negation together, the answer has to be one. And likewise, on that other one, if you have a double bar, it's the same as the original and vice versa. And if there were three bars, it'd be not A. A lot of talk. Don't worry, we'll get to it. We're going to take a good look. Here's the absorption theorem again. We already, oh, no, we didn't look at that one. Uh, here's De Morgan's. We're going to take a closer look at that one because it's an important one for us. If you can create anything that looks like this, you're going to be able to simplify it to just A, which is kind of cool. And likewise here. So kind of neat ones that you might not know off the top of your head, but you could look them up on the table. You could look up and you'd be like, I have this kind of situation. Is there any way that could be represented by a simpler, you know, gate or expression? Oh, sure. You could just have an AND gate. So what are we going to do when we solve these? We are going to apply 
our Boolean algebra rules. So when I look at this one, and I might talk without referring to the formula sheet directly because I don't have it in front of me, but as I go through this, if you're following this, it's a good idea to have the formula sheet. So I, you know, sometimes you factor, sometimes you multiply. I'm going to multiply the b into the brackets to see what I have once I do that. Okay, so I did a, a distributing thing. Looking at the third term, b times not b, well, that's always going to be 1 times 0, no matter which is which. So this is equal to 0. So I can simplify this to just a plus ba. Now, if you were to look to your formula sheet, you'd see that rule 15b tells you that a plus a times b, which is, we're allowed to switch the order on that, is equal to simply a. So you're done. I could have just taken this whole thing and represented it with a line, an a input. You might be asked to actually verify that, so you would build a truth table in that case. So let's put our inputs, put combinations. And I mean, we're gonna be comparing this column because that's straight up A. What do I need to, in order to make this work? I'm gonna need a not B, so let's just set that up so I can easily look at it. Okay. In brackets, so a or not b. So looking here and looking here and remembering it's that kind of adding thing. 0 plus 1 is 1. 0 plus 0 is 0. 1 plus 1 is 1 in Boolean and 1 plus 0 is 1. Okay. Now I'm going to do this multiplication. The AND gate. And in this case I'll put it in red. I'm looking at these two columns and it's multiplication so I need to have uh, both the inputs to be 1 in order to return a 1. So I'm going to get 0 times 1 is 0, 1 times 0 is 0, 0 times 1 is 0, and then I'm going to get 1 times 1 is 1. Okay, last step I need to make so this is a column that I'm hoping that's going to look the same as my first column. All right, and I'm going to use blue this time. I'm going to be comparing this bad Larry and the one I just made. It's an OR gate. So if any of the inputs are 1, it will return a 1. Okay, 0 and 0, add to 0, add to 0, add to 1, add to 1. Okay, so did I do this correctly? A correct simplification. Well, my a is 0, 0, 1, 1, and I have an identical output for the big nasty expression, so they are equivalent, and you have simplified correctly. Next, I'm going to go through each one of these simplifications for you, so we have a few in the bag. So looking at this, um, there was the associative rule where I can just take brackets and, and rearrange them. So I could rewrite this expression, oops, as a highlighter, as a plus, and the brackets aren't necessary, but they kind of make it a little clearer. Okay, and I believe that was rule number seven, and I'm just writing the rule numbers on the side that I'm using. So focusing on what's in the brackets, b plus not b is going to equal 1, and that is rule number 12. So my expression will simplify to a plus 1. Now, anything plus 1 in Boolean is still 1, so we have a rule number 10 where a plus 1 is equal to 1. And this entire 
expression can simplify to one. Looking at our second one, I'm going to deal with a times a first. This is equivalent to just a because one times one is one and zero times zero is zero. And that's rule number 11. Okay, so my expression has become a plus bc plus b and not c. There we go. What I'm going to do next is factoring. We haven't really done it. I usually like to teach factoring before Boolean algebra, but just to get an idea, if there's something that's in both terms, you can pull it out. You write it in front and leave the remainder in the brackets. So that's factoring, simple factoring or common factoring. Now, when I do that, and there's a law that kind of talks about that and that's the distributive, and it's kind of the opposite action, but that's rule number eight that did that for me. C plus not C is one by rule number 12. So I have A plus B times one, one times anything is just the thing. And the final simplification of this expression, A plus B. So this entire expression that we see across the top here in pink could have been represented, or you would get the same uh, outputs from the same inputs with only a single OR gate. And notice that you didn't even need the C input. Okay, the third one, this time I'm going to distribute because I don't see anything I can clean up inside the brackets. That's three different inputs. So usually there's kind of pretty double inputs if you're going to end up simplifying. So I'm going to make not a b plus not a and a and c. There we go. And that's rule number eight that kind of lets me do that as well. I'm going to highlight what I'm going to fix this time. It's going to affect the entire thing because not a times a is equal to zero. That's rule number 12 tells me that. Okay, I have, we'll take an extra step here, not a and b plus zero times c, which means this entire expression disappears. And my final simplification is not a, b. So let's take a minute to talk about De Morgan's theorem, which deals with negations. And what it allows you to do is kind of flip things. So if we look I'm going to highlight something here. If you have two inputs, two knots, you can combine them into a single bar if you flip the gates. So here I had not A and not B. I can change that to nor A and B, or nor B, A, B, A nor B, however you say it. Anyway, likewise, if I had had not A or not B, I can switch that to an AND gate. So flipping the plus to multiply and connecting the bar. I can also split that way. So if I had this situation, if it serves me better, I can break the bar and change the operator. So it was the OR, change it to the AND symbol. And when you look at this example down at the bottom, it's kind of order of operations are in the play. What is the gate that is under a bar? It's a NOR gate because this would have been an input. So you can break the bar between the A, B, and the C, change the operator from the plus sign to the multiplication sign and then you still have a NAND gate which you can break the bar there and change it into an OR gate with two NOT inputs if that is useful to you. So let's give one a go, maybe two. Okay, so dealing with the easy stuff first, A plus NOT A is one by rule 12. So that gets rid of that right away. 
So my situation right now is this. So you can use De Morgan's either way. I can use it to break the NAND gate and turn this into break the bar, change the operator, and then the original or the second brackets that stay the same. And there's this awesome rule of it's two things multiplied together that are the same. This little rule over here, number 11, that says a, a equals a. I can simplify this further to this expression. Or if you prefer, you could have left the NAND and dealt with the OR gate, combined the bar and changed their operator, and then you would have had this particular situation, which would have simplified to just an AND gate. So at the end of the day, it means that everything I've highlighted, this, this, and this for any combination of A and B will give you exactly the same outputs. They are equivalent expressions. Which one would you use? That's up to you to decide. <laughs> this is the extent of my Boolean action. Okay. Thinking about it, you know, if I thought of not A or not B, if I was building that just entirely from electronics, if all gates cost the same, this is a three gate expression. Whereas if I chose instead to build A NAND B, it's only a single gate. Whoops, I put the dot in. It's only a single gate, so maybe that's more desirable. At the end of the day, I would have said this was correct, and I would have said this was correct as well. Okay, I just want to quickly write out one last example. When you have multiple De Morgan's actions going on at once. So I'm going to do an example that looks like this. So very careful where my bars go. So this, the last gate would be a NOR gate because it's the bar that goes all the way across. So we're going to break that NOR gate first. And when we break it, we break it right where the operator is, change that operator to a multiplication, just like that. I take a minute and I'm like, well, if there's a double negation on the A, that's the same as plain old A. I can't deal with the double negation on the C, but I can if I use De Morgan's again. So within the brackets, I'm going to break the long bar and I'm going to change the AND to an OR just like that. And then I can drop the double negation on the C and end up right here. Once again, equivalent expressions. Pink will give the same outputs as pink. So that's it for now. We're going to do lots of examples in class to really get this hammered home.